All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna just start off by saying it's finally happening. We're bringing back the black V. Make the black V great again. So we've got the drift V up on jack stands. I pulled the knuckles off and I sent them to a fellow uh, V drifter, Mike, up in Pennsylvania. He's gonna cut them up and basically match what he has on his car right now. It'll be a good temporary solution, maybe long-term solution for getting more steering angle on this car. I also have the rear, the whole car is up on stands because uh, I had a rubbing issue and I gotta replace that brake line. Stuff like that I mentioned in the last video. So if you don't know, go check it out. So first order of business before I take the black V out of the garage. Um, I need to steal the intake back off of this car. The intake on this car is the one from the black car. Intake, uh, the air box. This math sensor belongs to this car, but then the coupler, tube, coupler. And then this hose that's zip tied to my fan typically goes to the um, valve cover on the LS2, but on the LS6, that hose goes to the throttle body. So slightly different hose routing on the, on the cars. So I just uh, put a bolt in it and uh, zip tied it down there. So I'm gonna rip this intake off of this car. And I guess for the time being, I'm gonna go back to my big filter and uh, giant elbow here. The main reason that I got rid of it and went back to a stock air box is one, we sell the carbon fiber tubes for the intakes and the stock air box is a true cold air intake where it pulls from. And it's the best flowing, uh, honestly, one of the best power intakes for the V1 just because of heat soak alone. That filter that I had in here was getting pretty heat soaked, but I'm gonna put it in for the time being. Granted, this thing is up in the air, so I'm not gonna be driving anywhere anytime soon, so I'll probably just leave it off. But we're gonna get this back onto the black car, get the black car running again, it's just missing the intake. And then from there, we gotta get it out of the garage and give you guys a rundown on what needs to be done to it and why I haven't touched it in so long. One thing for you guys to take notice before I rip this intake out is this is the intake is in the stock position, but you guys know that I moved the top of the rad forward a little bit on this car and I cut out the rad support. So just take a look and see how much room we have here between the intake and uh, when I put it in the black car where it is in a stock configuration. Little different. There we go. There we go. All right. There we go. Plug it in so we don't forget. So remember I was talking about room between the radiator? Can't even fit my finger down in there between the tube and the bolt. I have a little piece of tape on it just because I was test fitting a carbon fiber one. But we got our clutch quick connect or quick bleeder just tucked back in there. We got the hose back on, oil cap back on, intake back on. We are looking good. So now what I'm gonna do, give you a quick rundown and then we'll get to work on this thing. So with the black V, I basically replaced the clutch on it, swapped some parts over onto it, and I decided I wanted to raise the car up. So I started raising the car up, and I ran into the issue of uh, not being able to adjust the toe anymore because the factory toe arms were seized. And you might be thinking, hey, Mike, that's weird because uh, you make a toe arm kit for these cars. That I do, that I do. So this is what happened to the factory toe arm. Is it's a great display piece to show what mine and Walton do. So factory toe arm snapped at that adjuster joint and it's been sitting. Now it's also been sitting because I've needed to put tires on it, which then comes from the fact that um, I've just been so busy with this thing that I just haven't had time to mess with it. And all my money had been going into the Red V, the Drift V, and I just didn't really have the money to spend on it. But it's finally time, I need to get this thing back together. And I got plenty of tires because 
the drift event didn't go as expected. So that means I came home with a lot of tires. So uh, let me show you what I got here. In our floor to ceiling tire stack here, um, we've got some 245-40-18s. I think I'm gonna run these in the front. Right now I have 235s on it, but this will give me a little wider tire on the front and it will allow for me to fill the, the wheel gap with a fender out a little bit more. And then I have all these 255s, but then I have these 265 Kendas that I've had forever. I did, I had them on the back of the 3000 when I blew the transfer case of Shenandoah in 2020. And so basically they have like two or three drift laps on them. Um, but you know, so they got a little, little hot right here, but overall they're in good shape. They have a ton of tread left on them. And I think they would be the perfect candidate to throw on the back of the V. What I'm gonna do differently is run a 18 by nine, because as you can see, these 18 by nine and a halfs, they stick out a little bit. These were actually used to be on the back of the V. They stick out and they poke with a 235. So when I go to a 265, I did that once before as well, they rubbed pretty bad. So what I'm gonna do with these is run them on an 18 by nine. And from there, I will be able to have like zero camber, um, just a meteor setup and basically, not, I'll be able to run a good ride height with no camber in the rear. My biggest pet peeve and the biggest thing I want to get rid of was all the camber in the rear. The front, I'll run a little bit of camber, no big deal, but I also don't want the car to be slammed anymore. Because while the Florida highways are very smooth, Florida has some of the craziest entrances to parking lots. And that's why I find myself getting hung up a lot. So in addition to that, the wing that used to be on the black car, I got years ago, spray painted it, spray paint got super dingy. So I stole it for the red car and I wrapped it. So we're wingless and we got an ugly line. It actually double-sided tape, or I guess from like the tip of the wing rubbing, it actually rubbed through the paint. And it's like down to the primer there. So we'll have to touch that up, but I am gonna be ordering, uh, I'm gonna be cleaning up this this residue line here and then i am going to be ordering a new paint matched wing that comes paint matched so that'll be coming soon probably next week i think that'll be here uh, i just have to place the order but we'll have a nice paint matched wing we'll get that on and then we've got a new bumper so this front bumper i picked up when we first moved to florida some guy locally was selling a black v bumper and i was like holy crap um i'll take it it's been resprayed so there are a couple slight spots. It's kind of hard for me to see. I, I, I saw them at one point, but I mean, if it's hard for me to see here, it'll probably be fine on the car of just like the tiniest uh, of runs. And there is a little like crack or something right there. But at the same time, it is all black. It is in good shape. It has the upper and lower grill. All I got to do is put my, and it has that rubber piece on the bottom, which I uh, wore through a uh, long time ago on this car. And this car has a cracked front bumper and it's all trimmed out for the bash bar. It has these guys right here that like aren't even really attached anymore. They got all broken and uh, my grill was plasti dipped. It's kind of worn off. Emblem's hurting, the emblem on that one's hurting too. But there's a crack down there uh, that you really can't see unless you know it's there. But again, it'll rectify that and I'll put a bumper without these little side things on because now that I'll be raised up, I'll be less likely to be rubbing in here so I can go back to a uh, like stock mounting pattern. Um, so yeah, so that's another thing. So I'm gonna get this thing out we're gonna pop this bumper off and uh, I'll show you guys some other stuff that I did. And uh, we'll see about potentially getting this mounted up. So on the bottom side of the bumper, we got some scratches and stuff, but this is what holds the fog light assembly in, I think. So I'm gonna start by taking these two bolts out. In addition to those on the bottom, there is one at the top, and I think that's all that holds these guys in. We have our new bumper with the fog lights mounted. And we got our old bumper back there. 
So next, all I need to do is remove these little L brackets here with the tabs in. And uh, from there, I'll be able to just hook everything back up. It'll go on as normal on this car. I even put the factory crash beam back in, the factory like crash beam shock absorbers, a washer fluid tank. I mean, I went all the way back to like OEM. So this car is going back to OEM basically. And I just want it to be the clean street car that um, I always wanted it to be. Now that I have like a thrash car that I can go have fun with, this car will uh, definitely be on the cleaner side. And that's, I think more of the projects you're gonna be seeing with this car are just starting to turn it towards just that clean street car vibe that I could take anywhere and uh, not have to really worry about, you know, is the road bumpy and this and that and all oh, just that jazz. So I ended up having to pop the headlight out because I nut and bolted this underneath the fender and you can get to it from inside the fender here. So to pull the headlight out, it's just uh, a bolt right there, a bolt right there, and then a nut right there. And then you just gotta give it a little tug because there's a pin in here, like a little push pin. So headlight was out, headlights back in. We're good to go there. And uh, I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm gonna explain to you guys how the uh, bumper mechanism works on how it attaches on these cars. So here's what the back of your headlight looks like. You got your washer fluid tank here. Um, this is the feed line for the windshield wiper sprayers. And that's this pump. And then on, yep, on this side, you got a pump. And I already deleted all that stuff, um, but you have a pump here for your uh, headlight sprayers if you have a V. I need to put a piece of hose here and cap this off. Um, it's covered in sand because this sat outside for a little bit. So the rain, when I park over there in the driveway and the rain splashes sand up. So all this stuff is just has like a layer of sand on. I got a hose off, but piece of hose here, cap it off because basically every time I fill it, it just drains out and gives me a low warning light. I honestly thought I had a piece of hose there, but um, I'll do that before I put the bumper on. So this is what I meant by I had these things nut and bolted. So here is our nut. There it goes. And we are out. All right, guys, it's time for a little informational session here. So these bumpers attach to the fenders utilizing these like slots. And then there's one bolt hole back here, which I don't typically use. So these studs here, which we'll commonly seize on these cars. If it's a Northeastern car, you gotta be careful. They slide in and out. Let's see if I can get zoomed in here. They slide in and out of here via a 10 millimeter nut on the backside. So you have this nut, and then you have the stud and it goes in and out. So that stud has these ridges on it. You kind of want to start it in the hole so that it'll grab and it won't spin within that hole. And then you have these nuts in there. And what happens is you put the bumper on the car. The hole is larger towards the front. You put it in the hole, you slide the bumper back. There's both of them right there. And then from inside here, you tighten it. Once it's tight, you then have a 10 millimeter bolt that goes through on the backside. I think I trimmed all that out. I don't know if it's still there, but I'm just relying on these guys. So an issue with these is that these guys will seize up. So you don't want that. So what I'm gonna do here is just make sure that everything moves easily, doesn't get bound up, slides, and I'm just gonna hit everything with a little PB blaster just to help it uh, against some future corrosion. guys it sounds great here in this thing start it's been months then this thing's just been on like the tender so thank you guys for watching next video with this car next week we'll be doing stansco tie rods we'll be giving, mounting up some tires we'll be dialing on our in our ride height we'll be getting this thing aligned and uh 
we'll be getting this thing back out on the street. So I'm super excited. Uh, I hope you guys are excited to see this thing back. I, sh I definitely am. But um, in the meantime, we're gonna keep uh, working on Frank and whatnot, the drift V. And uh, we gotta get a, a wing for this thing ASAP. But otherwise, I'm just mumbling now. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more content. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one.